Welcome back. The video you'll be watching today will be on friction and momentum. Uh, two things that we have introduced at this point. Um, have done a little bit of discussion, but you can fill in your fill in the blank skeleton notes uh, along with the presentation. Uh, short little slideshow, a couple videos, some pictures for friction and momentum. All right, first of all, just to start, uh, friction is a force that opposes motion. So when something wants to move, Okay, friction is going to be a force that is going to oppose that, work against that. So maybe there's air friction. Uh, as you are uh, putting your head out the window in a car, you can feel the air pushing it against your face. If you put your hand out the window, you can actually feel your hand being pulled backwards because of that air friction. Um, usually it's going to be between two surfaces or objects. So it could be between your feet and the ground. It could be b between the tires of a car and the cement. Um, it could be between a piece of wood and the table. Um, if it has a slight angle, it, it might slide down the table for a while, but eventually it's going to come to rest because of friction. Um, say you have a, a car that you push, and you push it down the hallway. Uh, eventually that's going to come to a stop because of friction. If you had a frictionless world, none of that energy would be wasted. The object would just keep moving. Uh, it can be helpful and harmful. Sometimes we use friction as a helpful thing. Uh, maybe you put um, some sticky material underneath a rug on a wood floor. If you've ever stepped on um, a towel or if you stepped on a rug that wasn't uh, mounted, okay, and maybe it's on a slippery floor, it'll slide out from underneath you. So a lot of times you'll use stuff like maybe carpeting tape. You'll put it underneath the carpet, keep that tape um, underneath the carpet so you have friction to stop the carpet from sliding around. So it can be helpful and harmful. Usually it's going to be between two surfaces, but not always. Again, um, you'll have friction between the air and an object that's moving, water and an object that's moving, and that's going to be called fluid friction. Alright, there is a, a short little video. Uh, I'm, I'm, there's not going to be any sound, so I'm going to kind of just narrate what's going on. Um, I'm going to email it to you as well, or you can Google it if you search Mythbusters um, Friction. Uh, Mythbusters Friction, I think that it'll bring it up. But they're talking about uh, how if you take two phone books and you lay the pages together, uh, it is very, very difficult to pull them apart. I'm going to skip to a couple of the parts where you can see what they're doing. Um, here, they're, they're laying the, the pages on top of one another, so there's friction between the pages. And there's so much friction between all of the pages of the two phone books that they literally cannot pull them apart. You can see that they're using like tug-of-war techniques. They end up hooking them up to two cars. They're pulling the phone books apart right now with two cars, which ends up being very, very difficult. You can see here they even hook up uh, the two phone books between two army tanks, okay, two military trucks, uh, and they still can't pull them apart because of the amount of friction between the two books. Right. Friction alone can be a very, very powerful force. You can see right there the friction between all the pages that are, they're not glued together, but the friction is what's holding those books together. The outside, I think they taped just so the covers wouldn't come up. Um, it's a little bit better with the narration if you, can, uh, if you can end up hearing that. And we're back to it. Let's go to the next slide. All right. so what is friction? Right, there's sliding friction, there's rolling friction, there's fluid friction, static friction, there's all different types. Right? And the amount of friction depends on many things, right? like the roughness, right? so the roughness of the surface, and the amount of force pushing it. You can overcome friction. Right? When you push a chair that's on the ground, if you slide it forward, you're overcoming friction. Right? But a little baby with not a lot of strength, not a lot of force, may not be able to overcome that amount of friction. So you can overcome it. It depends on the roughness of the surface. Okay? Ice skating. It's not very difficult to overcome the roughness, because okay? there's not very much, but it's not very difficult to overcome the friction on the surface of the ice because there is not a lot of friction because there's not a lot of roughness. It's very, very smooth. Right, same for if you, if you poured a bunch of oil on the ground. It's not difficult to overcome the friction on the ground uh, if you spilled oil. Or if you're in the kitchen and you have like 
um, some sort of grease or vegetable oil that got spilled on the ground. You can overcome that friction very, very easily. All right, so some ways to reduce it, right? Because sometimes you want to reduce the amount of friction you have. Like in an engine, we talked uh, earlier in the year, we talked about um, inside of an engine, there's ways that you want to cut down on friction. You want to stop the heat from building up. Because if you rub your hands together really, really quickly, right? So if you, if you, even if you did that right now, and you rubbed your hands together very, very quickly, you're going to produce a lot of heat. The friction between objects usually produces heat. That's one thing that ends up being created. And again, we go back to our energy chains. Uh, the energy is being converted into heat in that case. But a lot of times you want to cut down on that heat. Engine oils, right? You can see all the pictures of the different engine oils. Mobile oil, uh, Penn's oil, um, Rotella. Um, so there's different types of oils that will cut down on the amount of friction, thus not having as much heat building up inside of the engine. You'll also use wax, like on the bottom of the skis. You can see the lady who's waxing the skis. Uh, anybody who skis out there, you want to have your skis waxed. So you cut down on the friction. You can go faster down the hill. You can coast back to the chairlift. Um, so cutting down on the friction is a good thing there when you want to reduce it. Uh, also, you can see the tub full of grease. Uh, a lot of times you'll grease parts. You'll grease engine parts. You'll grease parts of your car. Not only to stop them from squeaking, same with the WD-40, but your bike chain will move a lot easier if it's greased. Okay, there's less friction in there. If you've ever re-greased your bike chain, um, you can feel how smooth it moves. That's because you're cutting down on the friction, right? And there's not going to be as much heat created, and it's going to be easier to move. Uh, to increase friction, right? A lot of times what you'll want to do uh, is increase the friction. A parachute. You're increasing the amount of air friction. If you didn't have that parachute, the friction alone would not slow that human being down very quickly. Okay, could result in injury or death. The parachute catches enough air, and there's enough contact between the air and the parachute that it slows the person down where it's safe to jump out of that plane. Carpet tape, just a little review like we talked about before. Okay, Increasing the roughness um, or increasing the force. So in, the, in these cases, you're increasing the, uh, the roughness. Sandpaper. You may rough up the surface of a, of a piece of wood, or you might actually use the sandpaper itself as a way to stop something from sliding. Glue will increase the friction. Okay, Carpet tape. You put it under a piece of carpet so when you step on it, it doesn't slide out on a slippery surface. Right? Or you can increase the force uh, as well. Okay, How much force do you push with? Okay, just to kind of trans, um, yeah, ju I mean, just to, tr I mean, just to translate that, understand that with that force, I mean, we're talking about how much are you, uh, how, how much strength are you pushing with, okay? Uh, how much acceleration do you use in your car? How much gas or um, how much fuel do you provide so that you have more force to overcome that friction between the road and the tires? All right, moving on to momentum, Okay. Momentum is a property of a moving object that depends on the object's mass and velocity. So two things momentum is going to depend on, mass and velocity. Right. The more momentum it has, the harder it is to change the object's direction or stop it. Meaning, if something is moving, it's going to be difficult to stop it from moving in that straight line. And this has a lot to do with uh, Newton's laws. Um, Newton's first law of inertia, again, just to review that where an object's going to want to keep moving in a direction unless something acts upon it, right? Well, that isn't, um, momentum is one of those, one of those traits, right? All things that move have momentum, okay? Everything that moves has momentum, okay? And the object must be moving. If it's not moving, it doesn't have momentum, okay? It's the tendency to want to keep moving, okay? It's going to want to keep moving in that direction, and that's what momentum is. We'll talk about a few examples here. So the greater mass can mean greater momentum. Okay, greater velocity can mean greater momentum. Okay, both of those. Increase your mass or increase your velocity. Both of those are ways that you can get more momentum. So a dump truck compared to a smart car. Okay, this dump truck is going to have greater momentum. Okay, it has greater mass. But if this smart car is going 85 miles per hour, that still has a great deal of momentum. 
because its velocity is very hard. Okay, so momentum can depend on both of those, both the mass and the velocity. Right, it's the tendency to keep moving. Right, it's going to want to keep moving. It's going to want to keep going until something uh, acts on it. A lot of times what's going to act on it is friction. So the, the friction and the momentum a lot of times work against one another. Right? And then we have something called the law of conservation of momentum. Okay, and this is a law. Anytime two objects interact, they may exchange momentum. But the total amount of momentum stays the same. So you can't get any more momentum out of the situation. Okay, think about bowling. You throw the ball down the lane. It hits the pins. That ball has momentum, and it passes it into the first pin, which passes it to the next two, which passes it to the next three, and that momentum is translated. Okay, a game of pool. If you've ever played pool or billiards, uh, when you hit the cue ball, it's going to run into some of the other balls on the, on the table. Okay, you could actually get a combo where you hit three or four balls. Okay, maybe you hit the one into the three, which then hits the seven, and the seven goes into the pocket. Okay, that is momentum. And you can see this picture here with the dominoes falling. One domino passing its momentum to the next object. Okay, in the game of pool where they're breaking, um, at the start of the game, they're, they're, they're doing the break where they hit the balls and all of them go scattering all over the table because of that whole idea of momentum. So friction and momentum, two different uh, ideas, very, very much connected to one another, where friction is a lot of times going to be the tendency to stop an object um, because there's that, that contact between surfaces or contact between the fluid. Okay, uh, Air friction would be a fluid friction. Right? And then we also have momentum where an object wants to keep moving unless something acts on it, which is very, very similar to our, our Newton's first law um, of inertia where an object wants to keep moving. Uh, and then our final video, which is just a video of a Newton's cradle. Uh, you'll, you may have seen this before, but uh, it's a good demonstration of how an object will pass its momentum um, to another object. Right? And what will happen is you'll pull one ball backwards, let it go, and they'll keep bouncing back and forth. Notice how when it hits it, okay, when it hits it, one ball hits this side, the right side, okay, and the other ball moves off on the left side. Well, now if you pull two balls back, so you pull two, two of them back, two of them are going to be sent forward. So when, when those balls are, are sent forward, okay, if you pull back on the, the third one the next time, it will end up translating it to uh, another third ball. What's up, Jared? Real design.